As we're gathering information on our ancestors, and especially sources, it's really important to learn how I can actually pull a source from a different website and pour it into Family Tree. So here I have these wonderful websites sitting over here, Ancestry, Find My Past and My Heritage. When I find sources out there, I want the easiest way possible to get it over into Family Tree. And that's what we're going to focus on tonight. So I'm going to use this tool called RecordSeq. And all you have to do up in the URL is type in RecordSeq.com. And this is the page that appears. The easiest way is just to left click, drag this button up, and drop it off in your browser bookmark bar. When you do that, it just appears right here and it's ready to use. That's how simple it really is. So from here, if I was on Theodore's page, I would be clicking into Ancestry.com to go look for sources in their website about my ancestor. When I clicked on that, it brought me up a whole list of sources. Some are about Theodore and some aren't. As I scrolled down here, I found this yearbook source. And as I looked at it, actually it's this one right here, as I looked at it, I found a picture about my ancestor. It was amazing. So when I clicked into that blue link, it brought me here to this page right here. When I click on this view, it gives me a better picture of him. And this is my ancestor, Theodore. What a great picture to have of him. And I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to go back to this other tab. And from here, this is where then I can click on Record Seek here up at the top. Before I go click on that Record Seek, though, I want to show you what happens. Some people have been taught that when you highlight this information that's been indexed, and then go click on Record Seek. From here, it's going to ask you which program you want to put this source into Family Search or Ancestry. I'm going to click on Ancestry. You can see that that index portion of information ended up right here. But I don't like the format that it threw it into. It really bugs me. And so I don't, I choose not to do that. I'm going to go back now and I want to show you what happens when I do it a different way. Okay, we're going to start again. I'm going to highlight this information, but this time, I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy that information and then I will left click and unhighlight it. I do not want this to be highlighted when I go click on Record Seek. So I'm going to click on Record Seek again. And from this point, right here under the Describe the Record, I'm going to left click be before that source created by Record Seek and I'm going to hit Enter just to put that down a little bit. Then I'll left click and put my cursor back up there and I'm going to paste that information in that was indexed. Now for me, I think this looks a lot cleaner, much easier to read than that other mumbo jumbo before. So you can choose the way that you prefer. This is just what I prefer. You can also, with the source that you're adding, you can see that the year that it was done was 1912. Here, this is a collection of yearbooks. I can actually, behind this, I can add in the year of 1912, just so I know when I am dealing with my ancestor for that event. I also need to go in and tag this event, which the only thing that this provides evidence of is the name, and you can see also the birth. So I'm going to tag both the name, the birth, hit close, and then I'll come down here and click on Next. From here, let me put this back in the center. I now need to go grab his personal ID number to make this really easy on me. So I'm going to come back up here to Theodore. I'm going to copy his ID number up here. And then I will go back to, let's see, where would that be hiding? Right down here. Back to my record seek. And I'm going to paste in that ID number. So instead of filling all this information out, which is a pain, <laughs> All you got to do is have his ID number and then click Next. Now I need to put a reason of why I'm attaching this source in here. Once I type in why I'm adding this source to this person, I'll then go click on Create and Attach. From here, I can go view this brand new information on Family Search or I can attach it to a different person. And that's a really easy way just to get one source that is used by multiple people, just keep clicking on this, attach to another person, and it's really easy to do. Right now, we'll go back and we'll view this on Family Search so you can see what it looks like. We're back on Theodore's page, and when you scroll down to his sources, that last source that we added is up at the top. And if you like to put these in chronological order, 
I can literally left click and drag it down where it belongs and when I get that long gray strip I can let it go and it puts it in order for me. Now let's go look at that source just so you can see what it looks like. When I click on it, you can see here's that part that I actually highlighted and copied and pasted in there so that index portion sits there. But I can go click on this URL link and it actually will take me, when I say OK, it's going to take me out to Ancestry and it will bring me right back to this page right here. So then when I click on this view, I can then go get that great view of my ancestor. To end this, just so you know, it doesn't matter what website I'm in, RecordSeq will pull a source from any website and pull it into FamilySearch.org. I love it. It's absolutely amazing and it just makes my life so much easier in the genealogical world.